We've done it. We've solved the greatest mystery in the world. Duchess gets Butler arrested, but the Duke is at home. Butler picks up the gun. The Duchess sees him pick up the gun. She tells the detective that he has the gun. He then decides to straight up murder her. And therefore the detective should arrest the butler. All without having the duke home. My way was good too, but now we're on to treason. Okay, the usurper dies. So someone's got to get usurped. They've probably got to come back and say something bad happened so we can execute whoever's responsible. Though after playing with this, I think maybe she's the usurper because I think she took his crown. Okay, he notices the crown is gone so he locks her away. This guy comes back and sets her free. Maybe at which point she executes him. Which... It works surprisingly well. Well, after we locked off his head, I'm a little unsure what to make of this. I guess she's a usurper, so she's got to be the one to die. So if he's there, maybe he turns the tables on her? That doesn't work either. And he doesn't seem to lock her away. He only seems to free her. Okay, so once he rescues her, she might be able to arrest him. Okay, but it seems like once he's in jail, there's no really way to let him out other than executing him, which we can do, but that doesn't solve our little problem here. So maybe we take this all back a peg. Okay, finally worked out this very simple puzzle. She's clearly the queen, but he goes ahead and puts her in jail. Then when he sits on the throne, he gets her a crown. At which point the knight comes back and releases her. Then if we lop off his head, he's technically the usurper. Oh, she needs her crown back, so maybe we just need to execute him beforehand. But we can move the top two back, so he just he's now the usurper. We just gotta find a way to kill him in four panels. There we go, her crown comes back, and then I think we can go ahead and execute him. You got your crown back. Where did the crown go? There we go. You gotta do that this. You, she's gotta be re-coronated and then she executes him. So Queen goes there, off with his head. Finally. Now we gotta do it by the hand of the knight. Okay, so if it goes along and he rescues the queen then locks up the uh, king, we'll call him, he still won't take the crown because it's not his to take. So he either has to get mad at the queen or we need to change all the roles entirely. Okay, this might be a better course of action. The usurper takes the queen, pronounces himself king. He's very sad about his missing crown and or queen. Uh, she then gets executed by uh, the uh, king. But he still won't do anything without that crown, so he needs a crown from him. She's dead, so we might be able to just remove this one. Okay, the knight's mad at the king for killing the queen. And his crown is missing, and the queen won't want it back at this point, so he might be able to take it himself. He's very sad about that. Then he's going to execute him. Perfect. A happy ending always has 66% of your participants being executed. Unforgiven, Knight loses his head. Oh, I'm going to be good at this one. So using the pieces here, we need to make the queen so mad at the knight that she wants to execute him. If he would kidnap her, that would do the trick. But he won't actually do that because he's too nice of a guy. He's not like me at all. Oh, I think I've got it. If she's dead, he can wear the crown. But then she can come back and she's not going to be very happy about that. Especially when she finds out her crown is gone and it was him. She'll then kidnap him for some reason. Even though she's a queen, she can just straight up uh, do bad things to him and execute him. There might be one more step involved because she needs her crown back. So he can skip straight to the jail scene because she obviously knows he took it. At which point she can put the crown back on and then she's free to execute him. Perfect. Amnesia is called the execution. There's a wedding, a kidnap, an execution, and amnesia. Quite the perfect evening. So let's make them get married. Mm, she's not interested. So perhaps he kidnaps the queen. Well, then I'm running out of ideas. We'll give him amnesia. He forgot he left her there. Um, so if he lets her out... Yeah, this isn't quite right, but we're getting... I think she needs to have amnesia. She's very mad at him now. Okay, she goes in there. She gets amnesia. And then the kidnapping is reversed. He lets her out. She's very happy with him. Then they can get married. Then he straight up executes her. <laughs> okay. Of the Baron, so we gotta manage to do this in reverse order. But we got her killed, so that's a good start. Okay, well, you don't, we don't actually really need the amnesia here. So if he just uh, kidnaps her, but then lets her out, because he's a nice guy. Okay, he won't just let her out. So we need to move this, but we need to give him amnesia first, because he'll forget he did that. She didn't forget that he did that. They can still, uh, he can still get rejected, but she's gonna be pretty mad about that. So she's probably just gonna straight up execute him. Perfect. If you want, you guys can have a wedding now. Perfect. Happily ever after. Queen suffers four tragedies. I don't know how many more tragedies she can take. So they've pretty much got to come one after the other. So there's probably some betrayal. Okay, the best way I know to do this is starting with some kidnapping. So uh, he kidnaps her, but then the knight releases her. That could be a tragedy in itself. Let's pretend um, they get married. The Baron didn't get to be king though. We need to make him a king somewhere in there. So we need to skip everyone forward a step. So he's the king, uh, she comes out, she marries him, but then he executes both of them because he's the king, he's allowed to do that. So there, and one more execution. Uh, I'm not sure if we, uh, 
Got them all. That actually worked. I was just trying to execute as many people as possible. Double execution. That's the best kind. So uh, the king and the maid had an affair while she was in the bushes watching. So she executes her. Wouldn't want to get him uh, any worry. He might flee. And then, yeah. But we need the king to take revenge. We've only got three panels. But he's wearing a crown, so he can just kill her back. Okay. Regs to royalty. So those two are married. Not sure that's entirely necessary. Oh, I forgot about the affair part. Yeah, there's got to be an affair in here somewhere. This is just like an extension of the other one. Okay, it does get a little more complicated than I initially thought. Because we're going to have to do some kidnapping first, maybe. Either the king ki kidnaps the queen or the queen kidnaps the maid. Yeah, but the king's going to release the maid. And then she said, oh, is a queen to kidnap me? So the king says, off with her head. Uh, and then there's a wedding. This is how most modern day relationships happen. Or maybe the queen comes back as a ghost and says, good luck with that. The baron rules alone. There's a cliff, a wedding, etc. So let's assume the king and queen had a wedding. The baron pushes the king over the edge. Maybe he just straight up kills her too. Okay. So then the baron and the maid get married. Nope, he wants a crown. Okay, maybe before all this murder goes on, there's got to be some love affairs or something. Does the Baron come in to marry her at this point? Nope, they're both... Uh, she's in love with the King. Okay, so the Baron mur murders both of them. But then there's not really a lot of options left here to work with. Because eventually the Baron needs to kill the maid. He just needs to... We need to find a way to get him so mad at the maid he's willing to do it. Oh, I see. The only way she would be a problem is if she's above him on the line of the throne. She's not because she's a maid, but if she marries the King... Which happens after the queen dies and we just kind of revise history. Because the king's like, yeah, I remember her, but she fell off a cliff and died, so I can marry you now. The baron's like, that sounds like good news to me. You can get off the cliff and also, uh, they have to get married first, don't they? Then she has to, uh, take the short way down from the cliff and he gets to rule alone. Love a happy ending. Bernard drinks poison? I can't wait to give Bernard poison. So Bernard and Juliet are chilling in the forest. The full moon comes out and Bernard turns into a werewolf. At which point, uh, he attacks Juliet. Then turns back into regular Bernard, which is sad for him. Then he finds the ghost of Juliet there. And then he drinks some poison because he, um, is probably remorseful. Or he just really likes poison. Queen gets Baron arrested. Okay, in the ballroom, nothing's happening. There's a detective. We also have a disguise. Okay, the Baron needs to wear the costume. Then in the ballroom, the Baron and the Queen, she gets scared of the man in his scary costume. This one's trickier than it initially. He's very worried when the detective suspects him. He is suspicious of him at this point. He just isn't uh, able to do anything about it yet. Oh, I didn't realize the detective could find fingerprints on the costume after they talk. So if I reverse these two around... So he puts on the costume, scares the queen, takes off the costume. The queen tells him about it. He's a little suspicious. So he looks at the evidence, finds his fingerprints and off with his head. Cured of vampirism. So uh, Dracula here bit, what was his name? John. What if he's not a vampire? He just hang hangs out in the crypt too. Let's turn her into a vampire. She's in the crypt. Oh, okay. Now we're building something. So she turns into a vampire. He sees her in the crypt. He asks the professor, what do we do? You got to stab her in the heart. So, I mean, the rest really writes itself. He stabs her in the heart. That's cured of vampirism. Okay, we need to uh, sort of expedite this process a little bit. So he sees Dracula. He says, stab Dracula in the heart, as we all do. So he does. But then we need to cure the other two of vampirism. So we got a little bit ahead of ourselves on the murder, as we often do. Because then during the night, he bites her. So then he's got to see her too. He stabs her. He's got to see her. Oh, nope, never mind. I accidentally guessed it right. So because he bit her and then he died, her vampirism goes away. I thought we also had to uh, turn someone else into a vampire and cure them. Okay, that works. Monster is slain. Oh, someone's going to wear a disguise. This is going to be fun. So Bernard and Baron were out hanging out one night. The moon comes out. Bernard turns into a monster. But then the Baron puts on his monster outfit. And then these two hang out together. Okay, so then one of them needs to... Uh, okay, we're maybe overthinking this to start. Uh, okay, wait, I think I see. Because if we put uh, him here without the costume, I'm pretty sure he gets eaten. So that doesn't work. So he needs to put on the costume. They need to see each other, but then he's got to take his disguise off. Then he's got to talk to the professor who's going to give him a gun. And then he's going to shoot Bernard. Sorry, Bernard, but that's the way it goes. Now, we could do it the other way around, where uh, instead of him taking off his costume, 
Bernard just needs to see the Baron in costume form and get scared because then he just has to go to the professor and say, uh, whoops, I saw him. <laughs> then he's going to shoot him dead in cold blood. Sorry, Bernard, but, um, oh wait, Baron, I keep getting mixed up. Either way, you're going to die. Then he's like, why are you a ghost? What happened? And then he turns into a werewolf and he doesn't care anymore. Haiti murders father and marries mother. I am your father. Haiti pushes his father overboard. Nope, he does not. Doesn't push Peachy overboard either. We clearly have to make them not like each other. Oh, it has to be murders father and marries mother. I was just trying to kill them both. So we've established that he's the father, so his parents get married. He asks his mother to marry him. He doesn't know she's his mother yet. He gets mad and pushes his father over the edge. So then he marries her, and then they find out that um, he's his mother. She's his mother. That was a hard one to keep track of in my brain and speak on. Tiny avenges his brother. Okay, so far what I built, green, uh, green guy's the father, so he must be a son. Therefore, either of these could be a brother. We just need to learn to phrase it that way. So they get in a fight. Gray pushes Orange off a cliff. Tiny speaks and learns that uh, this guy killed him. So we just need to s somehow make them be brothers. Or maybe it doesn't matter that much. Actually, I guess if the mother and father are established, then we don't need to know who's brothers because they're the remainders. Either way, let's see if we can push this guy off a cliff right now. We cannot. Okay, green father, yellow mother. So these two get mad at each other. Father hates Haiti. So father pushes Haiti over the edge, which doesn't work, but he will push him. So maybe we need to make Haiti uh, be the father. He's the mother. They get in a fight. He pushes him over the edge. They have a, she a seance about that. And Tiny learns what happened. So Tiny avenges by pushing him over the edge, which still doesn't work. Okay, I realize that this one's probably easier to build backwards because Tiny avenges his brother probably by killing Haiti, which means we need to have him ha uh, having killed someone here that tells Tiny. This is where uh, he actually killed someone. We just need to give him a reason to fight someone and we need to decide which one of them is tiny's brother or maybe figure it out if a greenie uh got in a fight with haiti haiti killed him haiti uh greenie told him that he's a ghost that still doesn't really work you might have to have him kill them both you might have to get in a fight with both of them and murder them both i think i maybe get it now if two people have the same father they are therefore brothers so if we go family here haiti here and then we put uh whatever greenie here no, they have the same father, therefore they're brothers. But since Haiti is the easiest one to make kill everyone, these two are now brothers, and Haiti's gonna get a fight with get in a fight with Tiny's brother. He's gonna uh, kill him for that. So over the edge goes Tiny in a seance. Uh, Tiny, uh, the green one's gonna tell Tiny what happened. Then hopefully Tiny's gonna push him over the edge, and we finally have it done. That took a long time, but I didn't realize the parent thing because I'm stupid. Edgar murders his wife. So Edgar is back, our returning favorite character, Edgar and Lenora. So we need to give him motive to murder Lenora. Okay, we can start the pieces together. They're married. She wants to marry her, but Edgar's in a way, so she's married. Maybe she actually kills Edgar herself because Edgar's gonna drink that and die. Then they're gonna get married. This isn't gonna work, but at least we're gonna learn something. Because in a seance, uh, Edgar's gonna come back and tell Blondie what happened. So then she's gonna marry, murder her. So we just need to change the players around by you can see. Whoops. Uh, this one's gotta be wine and that's gotta be her. So we got two dead bodies, neither of which the one we wanted. But I think we could actually build this in reverse order because ultimately it's gotta be Edgar who's dead. So Edgar and Blondie get married. She wants to marry him, but he can't. He says, I can't. I'm already married to a blonde. So she murders the blonde. And then they get married. Blondie comes back and says, yeah, the purple-haired one killed me, so then Edgar goes ahead and kills her. Next up, Tiny murders uncle to avenge his father, and yes, that gets as complicated as it sounds. So first, we need to establish relationships. Green is the father of Bluey and Haiti, and uh, Green is a grandfather of Tiny. Tiny's uh, father and this woman get married. Tiny wants to marry that woman, but can't, so he pushes uh, Tiny's father over a cliff. He tells Tiny about that, and therefore he will be willing to push Haiti over a cliff. Haiti gets what he deserves. Duke shoots Detective to avoid prison. So the Duke witnesses uh, these two being in love. He doesn't like that very much, so he picks up the gun. Probably to shoot the king would be my guess. Which maybe is witnessed by the detective. Nope, that doesn't work because in the end he's getting arrested because he put the gun back. Okay, maybe this all happens. The Duchess witnesses the murder, so she tells the detective. The detective sees the gun is gone, so then maybe the Duke just straight up shoots a detective. Nope, he does not get that luxury. 
Okay, I got this to the point where the detective sees him get mad at her and then actually shoot her, at which point he does tell the king that, yeah, this guy's got a gun. So I think as long as he sees this happen, he'll shoot the detective before it's a problem, so he might not actually need to see the scolding part of that. Because now the duke has seen that the princess is dead and that the detective suspects him, so hopefully he'll just straight up shoot before asking any questions. Got it. Knight and maid murder the monarchs and have an affair. So we need to set up some tension early. The queen sees the king and the maid, which obviously isn't supposed to happen. So the queen kidnaps the maid, and I have a feeling this is start to get, gonna start getting very convoluted. The knight rescues her, so she likes him, but warns about the queen. So she kidnaps the queen, then pushes her off a cliff. Nope, she's still in there, so she just straight up murders her for funsies. It needs to be the knight right here murdering the king. Okay, I think I have this one solved. Queen witnesses the maid and the king having an affair. The queen locks up the maid. The king lets the maid out because he's in love with her. So the king locks up the queen. The knight just lets the queen out so she falls in love with him. The knight is mad at the king and the maid is mad at the queen. He, they both murder their monarchs and then they have a little affair afterwards. Perfect. 